So that's Iraq and Afghanistan. There's also another report out of the U.S. suggesting just last week Donald Trump asked officials for options on attacking Iran's main nuclear site. Apparently, he was talked out of it, although sanctions are still on the table. And there's also talk of the Trump administration planning to designate Yemen's Houthi rebels as a terrorist organization. Uh, the publication Foreign Policy says it's another initiative in the works before Joe Biden takes over in January. So James Dorsey is with us now from the National University of Singapore's Middle East Institute to discuss some of this. Uh, nice to have you with us, James. I guess we have to remember that there is only one president at a time. Yes, Joe Biden is president-elect, and we're all thinking about what he might do, but it is the president's prerogative to do what he wants, and these are the things that he has said he would do in these four years. Maybe he's just kind of rushing them through. I think what you're seeing is that Trump views the, la the next two months as his legacy. With other words, a legacy that will allow him to exit with successes in his mind, rather than whining over a lost election, and successes that would, could help him were he to decide to run for another presidential term in 2024. And presumably these are the kind of thing, well, actually maybe not presumably, are these the kind of things that could be immediately or quickly reversed by Joe Biden post January 2020, uh, January 20th. If he thinks that uh, drawing down troops wasn't a good idea, he could change the mind? Well, I think there are a number of things which he may do which are going to be difficult for Joe Biden. So if he were to entertain an attack on Iran, that would complicate a return to negotiations with Iran and the nuclear accord. Uh, similarly, we have to see what kind of sanctions he is likely to still impose on Iran. In one of the last rounds, for example, those sanctions were imposed not as part of the maximum pressure with regard to the nuclear accord, but as counterterrorism sanctions. And that makes them much more harder to, um, to, to uh, rescind. So he's, his goal is as much his own legacy as it is trying to limit what Biden can and cannot do. Just seeing, as you mentioned, Iran, uh, Joe Biden has talked about or the idea of, of rejoining the Iran uh, nuclear deal, the JCPOA. I mean, we say that, rejoining it. Is it that easy or would it be quite a process to happen? I think it's going to be a difficult process and it's going to take political will. So on the part of the United States, it's going to be domestic opposition. And clearly, if uh, the Senate were to remain in uh, Republican Party control, but also, the Iranians aren't just going to simply walk back to the agreement. They're, they're going to demand that uh, guarantees that the next administration doesn't walk back uh, away from it. They're going to demand da damages for what they perceive as the, uh, the cost of the harsh sanctions that Trump imposed. So I think you're going to get a, a, negotia a negotiation, probably through mediators, uh, about the terms on which you are going to negotiate before you get back to any form of agreement. Right. And on the issue of troops, which we heard about uh, from Mitch McConnell as well, who was actually opposing the idea of, of bringing down troops, what's your thoughts on the effect this could happen if there is this further drawdown, not so much the effect on Donald Trump in the US, but on Iraq and Afghanistan? Well, obviously, I think it would have a detrimental effect. I think the interesting thing to watch here is uh, if indeed Trump were to decide to pull back troops, whether or not the Pentagon and the military try and slow down that process. What you've seen in the past when uh, Trump wanted to uh, draw down troops from out of Syria, the Pentagon basically slow walked it and ultimately Trump decided to keep a, a, a small number of uh, troops in Syria. You could see the same thing happen both with Afghanistan and Iraq. Keep in mind that even Mitch McConnell has come out strongly, as, it were, as, as you had in your uh, mm. earlier uh, part of this broadcast, very strongly against the withdrawal, comparing the situation with the withdrawal by Obama in 2011, which, and Mitch McConnell's words, led to the rise of the Islamic State. James Dorsey joining us from Singapore today, talking U.S. foreign policy. Uh, thank you very much for your time. We really appreciate it. Thank you for having me.